So now, we will be talking about the first general class of organic compounds and uh, we call these hydrocarbons. Generally, we call them like that because these compounds contain only two atoms that is hydrogen and carbon but we can further divide the hydrocarbons based on the pr based on the presence of a double or triple bond or even in the presence of an aromatic ring and uh, we can classify them into three alkanes alkenes and alkynes so the only difference among these three is only by a single letter but at this point I would like to talk first about alkanes let's lock this up first and let's focus on alkanes alkanes generally are hydrocarbons wherein all carbon to carbon bonds are single the moment that there would be a double or triple bond in any of those carbon to carbon bonds they would be classified as either an alkene in the presence of a double bond or an alkyne in the presence of at least a triple bond and now since we are talking about alkenes let's try to draw a sample I'll try to draw four carbons so this would resemble butane so let's just complete the hydrogens here All right. This is butane. Recall that all of these bonds are just single, and since they are all single bonds, then we could assume all of them to be sigma bonds. All of this. So we have a bunch of sigma bonds here. And uh, recall that sigma bonds are strong bonds it's not really that easy to break a sigma bond so we have a bunch of sigma bonds here and that means that alkanes are generally very stable there is no bond that we could easily remove or break unlike if we have a double or triple bond remember if we have a double or triple bond there is a presence of pi bonds which we could actually find easier to break and uh, therefore alkenes and alkynes would actually be more reactive so now for alkenes we say that they are relatively unreactive because they are very stable in their structure there is no area there that makes it unstable or reactive to other reagents all right other than that general a general property of all hydrocarbons is they are quite nonpolar Look, the only bonds we have are what carbon to carbon bonds and we know the electronegativity difference is none and carbon to hydrogen bonds we could uh, then again calculate for that 0 0.4 falls under the nonpolar range remember and so this would be nonpolar and so generally especially for longer alkanes they are insoluble in water due to their nonpolarity but up to what degree of insolubility would they possess? It would uh, actually also depend on their length. We know for a fact that the only forces of attraction that they could induce are van der Waals, all right? Because there's, there's no presence of any polar functional group in that structure. But now when we talk about the length, we know that as the number of carbons increase, the length as the length increases the van der Waals forces increase and the nonpolarity increases or in vice versa we could say that the polarity decreases further so if we like compare butane a 4 carbon alkane to let's say decane which is a 10 carbon uh, alkane then we should say that decane is far more insoluble in water because it's far more non-polar alright and uh, well there's also the presence of or the factor of branching meaning uh, there are substituents in the parent chain for example this one is straight alkane 
this one is a branched alkane it has one substituent here the advantage of a linear alkane one without branches is that they can stack together and this one would allow for greater van der Waals van der Waals unlike here this hinders the capability of this alkane to stack to each other because it would look something like that and therefore the van der Waals forces decreases so what happens is if you compare a branched alkane to a linear alkane most likely the linear alkane has stronger van der Waals this is more nonpolar and uh, of course more insoluble in water all right now um, because they are actually very uh, unreactive as we already know we should try to look at what could actually react with it so if we look at nucleophiles and electrophiles it is now known that nucleophiles or electrophiles cannot react with alkanes but the other type of attacking group there are only three right the other one we haven't mentioned is the free radical and uh, they're actually generally more reactive and uh, so for example I will uh, I'll just use another paper I'll draw a reaction here for alkanes let's say I have here ethane and uh, let's add a chlorine molecule this is the only reaction that happens with alkanes wherein one of the chlorine atoms here are ad added to ethane but it should be in the presence of sunlight or UV rays and uh, after that what happens is that it goes something like this one of the chlorine atoms replace one of the hydrogens in the ethane and that hydrogen merges with the other chlorine atom and we see it goes something like in the species of we say that um, probably this ethane would represent AB and uh, each of these chlorine one of the chlorine we, we could say would be C and the other would be D and uh, we add them together what do we get one of the chlorines probably let's designate that as C it goes to let's say A uh, which is the majority of the ethane molecule and B we could assume to be one of the hydrogens here merges with the other chlorine atom so it goes in this format and we know that this uh, this is actually substitution reaction and uh, a reactant again is chlorine in the presence of UV rays this would actually yield two chlorine free radicals and because we have free radicals reacting we say that the reaction is free radical substitution again free radical substitution do not forget free radical substitution if you forget that I think like one of our professors say most likely I hope um, good luck I hope lightning won't strike you now anyway when we are having this uh, free radical substitution reaction uh, by the way this is called free radical substitution halogenation because we're adding a halogen here for example chlorine but generally if you if you put an alkane under this reaction it would go on and on and on and uh, you can see that the hydrogens here are being substituted and uh, this reaction goes on and on and on until all the hydrogens have been replaced by the halogen for example let's have a methane here if I add a chlorine based on this we already know the mechanism we would get something like this yes and every time we add another chlorine we just substitute another hydrogen for another chlorine and then another one uh, now it becomes three chlorines and final finally we add the last chlorine to fully saturate this carbon with chlorine molecules and uh, we actually have names for these steps the first reaction that starts all of this is called the initiation 
Alright. Then the rest of the reactions going on, except for the last, are propagation because this is where the number of halogens substituting the methane molecule or any alkane increases. And the last step wherein after that no more hydrogens can be replaced, that would be the termination step. Um, basically, that's the most major uh, reaction of alkanes, and the other reactions are very minor. And uh, with that, we are actually already done with alkanes.